for sponsoring today's video. Hello little doodles, it's Amanda, welcome back. Today is a big day guys because we are doing the final monthly plan with me for my 2020 bullet journal. I think, you know, we can all agree 2020 has been a weird year, so it'll be kind of nice to finish it off with like the final chapter in the book, which is my December bullet journal setup. Um, as you can see, I have my cozy vibes because it is officially holiday winter season, so I'm loving it. I'm gonna have um, maybe a nice cozy bullet journal spread to match, which will be nice to sit down and do. Just a couple of things before we get started. I wanted to say thank you so, so much for the amazing positive response for the 2021 Doodle Planner launch. We ended up selling out for our first pre-order batch, which was insane. Thank you guys. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Regarding restocks, because I know a lot of people have been asking about that, we will be doing a second round of pre-orders very soon, so make sure you stay tuned on our Instagram or on our email newsletter on our website in order to find out all of the information. We're also doing, you know, a regular Black Friday sale for dotted notebooks too, so if you want to get started and get ready for the new year with a brand new bullet journal, you can check that out for Black Friday. Anyway, we should probably get started on the December 2020 bullet journal set up the final monthly plan with me for this weird crazy year so grab your bullet journals and pens if you're planning along with me and maybe a cup of tea or snacks if you're just planning on hanging out and watching and let's get started in my previous plan with me video i promised you guys that my next theme would be a rustic vintage vibes theme and i kept my promise for december so the theme for this month is inspired by those rustic parcels that are wrapped in craft paper um, and tied in a bow with twine. Uh, I don't know, I feel like you see these type of gifts all over Pinterest, cute ways to wrap your presents. I even made a video a while back when I was still doing DIY videos on different ways to wrap your gifts and this actually reminds me of that, so it's kind of a callback to my old school videos as well. For the cover page, I used these craft paper sticky notes. If you don't have the sticky notes, obviously you can just use regular craft paper and just cut it down to size, but the sticky notes were kind of the perfect size for what I was going for. I rounded off the edges and I also crumpled it to give it this really worn in look, almost scrapbook vintage-y a little bit. And then on top of that, as you can see, I'm drawing these leaves with some little red berries to make it look a little bit more holiday and festive. And then I'm drawing string tied up in a bow so it looks like the craft paper is the parcel or the gift. I also really quickly outlined the craft paper rectangle, not making sure everything's too perfect because my style for this entire setup that I was going for is very loose and illustrative, very warm, cozy, and again, obviously more of those like vintage vibes. And to tie everything together, you guys know I love me some stars, so I used this metallic gold marker and added some sprinkles and stars all over it. I thought a more elegant style of lettering or cursive would fit really well with the aesthetic of this setup, so that's what I did for December. In order to do that, I just made my lettering a lot more slanted and smaller and spread out a little bit. And honestly, I think this cover page would look really cute even if you just left it with that parcel right in the center. But I really wanted to go all out with that vintage scrapbook postal service look. So in the empty spaces, I filled it in with some stamps that I have that mimic stamps that you actually put on letters. And I also used the gold marker to do some fake writing, as you can see. If you try to read it, you're not gonna be able to because I was just really like scribbling a little bit. But those scribbles ended up working out really well because I think it tied the whole thing together. Really emphasized that vintage scrapbook look and it was pretty easy to do obviously because I was just scribbling in a line. Um, and it almost looks like something that you would see in a 19th century letter or from someone writing home from war or something. <laughs> On the page next to it, I wanted to do a quote page, so I crumpled up some more craft paper. I made it a lot larger this time. Also, by the way, I crumpled up a lot of craft paper during this entire setup, and it was oddly very satisfying and stress relieving, so highly recommend uh, crumpling up some paper from time to time <laughs> if you're feeling stressed. 
Again, I went for more of those vintage stamps. This was honestly a really fun setup for me because I got to use a lot of stationery items that I don't normally get to use, like these rubber stamps um, and these alphabet letter stamps, which I do get a lot of questions about. Um, I got these from Amazon. I'll leave them linked down below. The quote that I decided to use for this month is, for it is in giving that we receive. I thought this was the perfect quote for this parcels slash gifts theme, but also a nice reminder to be extra generous during this time of year because as great as it is to receive gifts, honestly, my favorite part of the holiday season is giving gifts to people that I love. I've always loved thinking of unique special gifts for each person and wrapping them really nicely. <laughs> I like to think that I'm a pretty decent gift giver, uh, at least I hope so. But anyway, for the quote page, I just added more of that fake <laughs> lettering, those scribbles that makes it look like a old school letter, more stamps and washi tape, and on to the calendar page. So for this, I wanted to use this um, craft paper gift tag that I had. It honestly worked perfectly with the theme, so I kind of had to use it. I crumpled up some more paper, this time just some white grid paper. And then I kind of just shuffled things around and laid out where I wanted each thing to be in the top corner. With this type of stuff, there's really no rules because it is that scrapbook loose feel. Honestly, I feel like you can't really mess it up and it'll look good no matter where you place things. But um, I do get a lot of questions from people asking like, how do I know where to place washi tapes and all of that? Just don't be afraid to play play around with stuff, remove things if possible, shuffle things around until you find the best placement. I drew on a little string so that it looks like it was attached to the tag, added more of these gold stars as well as the leaves, and then I'm starting to draw my calendar. This month I went again for a slightly smaller calendar size, so these boxes are five dock grid spaces by five dock grid spaces, um, and I am just writing out those lines, which by the way, I have a video on how I draw straight lines without a ruler <laughs> because everyone always asks me about that. So I will link that in the uh, cards up above. I messed up the numbers a little bit, so I had to white them out and go in on top of them. And I actually made the same mistake twice, <laughs> which was unfortunate, but that just shows you guys, I mess up in my bullet journal a lot too, so don't worry. On the right side of this calendar, I added some more crumpled up craft paper. You guys are gonna see me do this a lot for this month, uh, which by the way, the trick for this is to crumple it up and then really flatten it out with your fist or palms because um, then it'll still lay flat in your bullet journal and you can still draw on it and everything. I also went through through a whole roll of this tape roller adhesive <laughs> for this month because I was sticking a lot of things in to my bullet journal. I'll link this down below as well as all of the supplies that I use because the tape roller adhesive thing is like a lifesaver, definitely one of my must-have stationary items in my pencil case. On top of that craft paper corner, I'm drawing a larger version of these green leaves that I've been drawing. Um, I didn't want to do like something too, too Christmassy, like, you know, what is it? Those pine tree ne needle leaves. Um, so I feel like this could still be not Christmas themed if you took out like the red berries or something. Um, I wanted to try to keep it as non-denominational as I could. Although I have to admit, I'm pretty excited about Christmas because it's one of my favorite times of the year. So at certain points, I couldn't help myself with the Christmas vibe. But if you did want to remove the Christmas aspects of it, I would just take out the red berries and maybe um, add some flowers instead or something like that. Honestly, you could also just not do the leaf or plant doodles at all. And it would just be a really cute vintage parcels scrapbooky type of theme, which I think would look really nice as well. I filled in the empty spaces all around it with some more of those rubber stamps, as well as that fake scribbly writing that I've been doing. Oh, and in that top right space, that empty space in the corner, I wanted a section for me to write out my monthly goals. So I'm just using those alphabet letter stamps to create a heading that says goals, as well as filling in all around it with some more of those sparkles and stars. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to my habit trackers and mood trackers. For this month, I did my habit trackers horizontally across the page. I have six different mini calendars and I drew them in little rectangle boxes. And I also drew some ribbon at the top so that they look like little parcels or gifts. I didn't fill in the inside of those um, habit trackers, like I just kept them an empty rectangle with no numbers or anything because honestly at this point I can kind of use the Dockard spaces as calendar spaces and cross-reference it to my calendar spread from before in order to know like which day it is on the tracker if that makes sense. I know that might be a little bit confusing but if that's confusing to you, you can just, you know, either write out the grid lines or write out the numbers on each mini calendar. For the header, I wrote out December trackers with this craft paper heading as well as more of those leaves. And then I used my alphabet stamps to write out each individual habit that I was tracking this month. So I have vitamins, watering my plants, working out, cleaning my apartment, doing TikTok because I've been trying to up my TikTok game, as well as eating healthy. For the title on the side, I wrote habits in that like gold cursive-y font that I've been doing, the scribbly lettering. At the bottom is my mood tracker and for this month I wanted to do a more graph style mood tracker because I feel like I haven't done one of those in a while. Usually I'll do one where you color in a specific image or something like that. But for this I wanted to do just a simple graph. So. I wrote out the axis and then mood at the bottom. And then of course, filling in the empty spaces around it with more washi tapes, doodles of leaves, gold stars, and stamps. Next up is my favorite spread to make every month, which you guys should know by now is my monthly playlist spread. As usual, I'm going to link my Spotify playlist down below with all the songs that I've been jamming out to recently. I'm actually going to be linking two Spotify playlists. One is my Christmas playlist with all of my fave Christmas jams. Uh, and then the other one is just a regular playlist with songs that I've just been loving recently. For the actual spread, I crumpled up some more of that good old craft paper, filled the whole page with it, and added some washi tape. For the header, I feel like this entire month's setup, I had two different header options for every spread, which was either that elegant cursive looking lettering or using the alphabet stamps. And for this spread, I opted for the stamps just to keep things looking a bit more simple. And then I added some leaf doodles with the berries coming in from the top left and bottom right and also added some gold stars and dots all around it. I love the way that this page is laid out for some reason. I feel like it really looks like a collage scrapbook which I think is really cute. Oh I also outlined that entire craft paper rectangle with my fine liner just to make it stand out a little bit more. Just like I've done in my previous playlist spreads, I printed out some album covers of the songs that I wanted to include. These aren't all of the songs in the Spotify playlist. If you want to listen to the full Spotify playlist, again, I'll link it down below. These are just maybe like the honorable mentions because I wouldn't be able to fit all of the songs on to one spread. Some of the big notable shout outs, of course, BTSB album, which I did a video on recently. Also, Lily Pichu, Dreamy Night, which we've been jamming out to on my Twitch streams a lot, very chill, lo-fi vibes, as well as Apollo 11 by Jimmy Park, Five Star by CL, which have been some of my favorite bops recently. Um, and that was it for the playlist spread. I don't know why I moved on so quickly, but <laughs> uh, I'll link the Spotify playlist down below again. On to the next spread. This is something a little bit different. I thought it'd be fun to include an actual envelope in this month's theme because it is all about, you know, parcels and gifts. And of course, 
you always gotta include a letter with your gift. Well, at least I like to. So I had these craft paper envelopes that I just stuck into my bullet journal and I wanted to make it look like a letter, but actually the spread is my gift list. I'm starting to do a little bit of holiday shopping, so I usually like to have a nice spread to keep track of all of the people that I need to shop for. So I thought this was kind of cute and it was perfect to put those like postage stamps on top of the letter, the envelope I mean. I think this spread turned out really, really cute. Also included in this gift list is gifts for you guys because of course, Amanda Claus season is coming up soon, so I can't wait for some Amanda Claus giveaways. I hope you guys are excited as well. And finally, it's time for the first weekly spread of December. As you can see, I'm crumpling up a lot of these craft paper sticky notes. Again, it was very, very stress relieving. But I'm doing this because these sticky notes were kind of the perfect size for a weekly spread layout that I like to do normally. Um, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do each individual day within these craft paper sticky notes. So I'm just rounding off the corners and laying them out in my bullet journal and then sticking them in, of course. Really make sure that you get those pretty flat or else it'll be kind of annoying to write on, but I just really like pressed down just to make sure and I tested out some of the writing. It's really not that bad to write on the crumply paper, although I know it can probably bother some people. For the days of the week headers at the top of each craft paper box, I used my handy dandy alphabet rubber stamps. Definitely made good use of these this month. I also outlined each box with my fine liner and added some of those leaves and bear leaves. Sorry, I don't know why I said leaves leaves and berries. And within the berries is where I wrote the number of the date. Sometimes when I do this type of layout where there's four boxes on each side of the spread, I'll leave an empty section for like a next week type of section where you can write out tasks that you want to make sure to move on to for next week. Uh, but in this case, I decided to just go a little bit more decorative with it. And I just wrote December in the top with that cursive font and added the stars and stamps and all of that stuff all around it. But if you do want to have more of a functional section, you can turn that into pretty much anything you want, whether it be a next week section or maybe a mini tracker or a goals for the week type of section. It's up to you. All right guys, before I show you the final flip through of my December 2020 bullet journal setup, I just wanted to take this time to quickly talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Skillshare. I've talked about Skillshare a ton of times before on my channel, but it's just because I genuinely love their platform and what they do. And I also love just being a part of the community. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, they're an online learning platform with thousands of classes in business, design, illustration, you name it, they have a class. I also have a couple of exclusive Skillshare original classes on the platform if you guys are interested in them. The most recent one that I taught was all about art journaling and creative journaling for mental wellness and a lot of you guys have said you enjoyed that class which makes me so so happy so if you guys want to check that out or any of the other classes even if you don't want to take my class there are so many other classes whether you want to improve your skills for your career or just learn something new. I know that the new year is coming up so a lot of people you know set new year's resolutions for learning something new and Skillshare is the perfect place to do so. So premium membership gives you unlimited access and it's actually pretty affordable, especially when you compare them to like actual in-person workshops and classes. An annual subscription starts as low as $10 a month. So if you guys want to try out Skillshare for yourself, Lil Doodles can click the link in my description box for a limited time to get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's get on with the flip through. Here's the flip through for my vintage scrapbooky parcels slash postage themed December 2020 bullet journal setup. I love the way this turned out. Let me know what you guys think of the final monthly setup for 2020. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me set up my December 2020 bullet journal setup. Um, I always see my bullet journal as like a time capsule. So it feels a little bit bittersweet that we're ending it off another chapter, another year of bullet journaling, maybe especially this year because this year didn't quite go how any of us expected, but you know, 
onwards and upwards, hopefully. As I'm speaking, here are some of your recreations from last month, which was November, uh, which was such a fun month, by the way. I'm glad you guys enjoyed recreating that one. If you guys do recreate any of my spreads from this month or previous months, make sure you tag me on Instagram, at Amanda Ashley. You can also use our hashtag, hashtag Lil Doodles. And if you're interested in seeing how the rest of my December bullet journal setup unfolds with all of the weekly spreads, make sure you check out my Twitch channel. I have been doing weekly spread live streams every single Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and it's been so much fun. I genuinely have been loving live streaming on Twitch, and it's a little cozy community. So if you wanna see real-time spreads being made, that's the place and come join the fam over there. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for me. That wraps up another full year of bullet journaling. I think this was my fourth year bullet journaling. So thank you guys for always supporting these videos and for being interested in the little doodles that I draw in a notebook. I will be coming out very soon with the flip through videos and the 2021 bullet journal setup, the big videos. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But anyway, uh, I will see you guys then. Keep doodling. Bye everyone.